Your front derailleur does a pretty simple job. It moves your chain from one chain ring to the other. As it turns out, that actually takes a lot of effort and a lot of nifty design. I'm Dan Cavallari for Preem TV, and today we're taking a closer look at how a front derailleur works. Let's start with the anatomy of a front derailleur. Now, the key component, as you can see, is this cage here. And the cage is what's responsible for actually pushing the chain side to side. There's an inner plate on the inside here and an outer plate. Usually these are made of metal, but there, there are some carbon ones out there. Uh, but for the, for the most part, it's made of a durable material because it's gonna be uh, taking a lot of uh, friction and, and grinding against your chain. Now, the cage is connected to these arms that pivot. And you can see the pivot points here. The cage itself uh, moves in a, a pretty linear path from one chain ring to another. And that's because these arms move in a parallelogram fashion. What that essentially means is as the cage moves inward or outward, it's also moving up or down and keeping these plates parallel to the chain rings. That makes it a smoother shift, a quicker shift, with less effort from you. The arms are connected obviously to the main body of the derailleur, which is in turn clamped somehow to your frame. We're gonna talk about that in just a moment. To adjust how far the cage can move inboard or outboard, you have these two limit screws. Turning these limit screws will either prevent the derailleur from moving too far outboard and kicking your chain off this way, or the uh, opposite direction, if you're going down to your smaller chain ring, the other limit screw, the low limit screw, will prevent the chain from dropping off into your bottom bracket shut. The other adjustment option you have is via your main clamp. You can rotate it so that you can adjust this cage to get it exactly parallel with your chain rings, or however the manufacturer recommends you set it up. In the case of this particular derailleur, you can see it's an electronic drivetrain, so there's a battery mounted here. Essentially, there's a motor in there that's doing the work that your hand would otherwise do, engaging your shift paddle, which will then in turn pull or, or release a metal cable. If it's a cable-actuated front derailleur, you'll see a cable attached via a pinch bolt, and when you pull on your shift paddle, it'll take up the slack in your cable and pull down on the derailleur, which will in turn push the cage outward. When you hit the other shift paddle to release that tension, the derailleur will move inboard to shift into the lower gear. Your frame will have cable routing in the event that you have a cable actuated system, and the cable can pull from either the bottom, underneath your bottom bracket shell, or from the top. That is your top pull or bottom pull options. And basically that means which way is the cable pulling from. If it's pulling from the bottom, it's a bottom pull system. There's a special derailleur for that. Uh, if it's pulling from the top, it's a top pull, and you'll need a top pull derailleur. Now, a lot of modern derailleurs actually have the option to be run either way, which is pretty convenient. Some of them don't, so make sure you get the right one. Now, shifting a front derailleur actually takes a fair bit of force. Now, when you're shifting with a cable actuated system, you'll notice that it takes a bigger swing of your hand to push that paddle and get the front derailleur to move from the small ring to the big ring. That said, you should never ever try to shift if you're not pedaling. Part of that is for obvious reasons. If you just push this derailleur and, and you push against the chain, you could damage it. But the other reason is your chain rings work in conjunction with your derailleur to ensure smooth, crisp shifts. Your chain rings have what are called ramps and pins, which are essentially design features built into the back, usually the larger rings, because the smaller ring doesn't need it because you're not going into that ring from a smaller cog. So, the ramps and pins help move the chain more smoothly as the derailleur pushes it sideways. A quick note about cross-chaining. Cross-chaining happens when you're in the big ring up front and your largest cog on the cassette, or vice versa, the smallest cog on the cassette and your small chain ring up front. That puts a lot of tension on your chain and all the other components. Uh, you should avoid it whenever possible. Chains today are a lot more durable than they used to be and uh, a lot better designed, so they can handle it but you're also going to get rubbing on your front derailleur cages in those situations. So if you hear rubbing on your front derailleur, it's entirely possible that you're cross-chain. You might want to consider shifting either your front derailleur to accommodate or adjusting your rear derailleur to accommodate. When you buy a drivetrain to install on your bicycle, the manufacturer will include instructions on how to set up the front derailleur properly. It does vary by brand. So be sure to note the instructions specific to the type of derailleurs that you have on your bike. Now this is a basic run through of the front derailleur. If you're interested in how the derailleur 
uh, works with the other components in the drivetrain system, please be sure to check out the other videos right here on Preem TV.